Welcome to the Andrew Throne Improvements deck building series. In this series, I'm going to show you how to build a deck from start to finish, but before we can do the fun parts like framing and decking the deck, or the not so fun parts like digging and pouring the footers, we have to start way back at the beginning, episode one, planning your deck layout. So here's a quick look at where this project started, and this was actually after I demolished the existing deck because it had a lot of issues. For one, the posts weren't even touching the footers, and the joists, well, I'll leave it at that. And for those of you who are just itching to get into code requirements and all the figures, we're gonna get to that. Just give me like two seconds to set the stage. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you a trick that you can use to hustle your friend out of 20 bucks on the construction site. And one last thing I wanna mention is that if you're considering adding a koi pond to your backyard, probably don't because that's what the previous owners did. And the second there's a rip or any kind of maintenance, it usually just goes to crap and it was a pain in the butt to backfill. Now, in terms of deck planning, the good news is that it's usually as simple as plotting three lines and a couple circles. Let's hop into the SketchUp model and I'll explain. So here's a look at the overall 3D model for the deck I plan to build. But if we strip away the decking, you can see the framing and I know it looks a little bit intimidating and that's because eventually I may want to add a pergola and a hot tub. So I want to make sure that I have enough beams in place for that. But the truth of the matter is that 99% of decks are just going to have one beam like this. Now, if I manipulate the viewport, you'll see that those three lines I was talking about earlier simply represent the width of the deck and then the one perpendicular beam. Let's head back outside. Now that we have the site clear, it's time to do our layout. For that, we're going to need a few stakes and some string. My deck is going to start here in the corner, even with the edge of my house. So let's start here. After hammering the stake in the corner so it's even with the edge of my house, I'm just going to take a piece of string and tie a knot around this stake. I don't really care about the knot on this side, so I'm just going to tie a granny knot and I'll show you a trick on the other side. Run the string a few feet past where you think the edge of your deck will be, and then we're going to set up a batter board to make sure that it's perfectly square from the house. So I feel pretty good with it being right here. So I'm gonna set one stake on this side and then one stake on the other side. And then I'm gonna set a post in between and we'll be able to pivot this as needed to make sure it's perfectly square and perpendicular to the house. I think we'll set the other one like right here maybe. Then we're just gonna secure the horizontal board to the back right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a nail where I think is perfectly perpendicular to the house. I think it's like right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this string, and here's a quick trick. If you wanna cut string, what you can do is make sure you have plenty of excess, step on one end, hold it like this, loop it over, bring this around, and you can cut it with friction, just like that. I'll show you that slower at the end of the video. And this is my favorite way to tie off the end right here. So what I do is I make a loop like this, and then you're gonna just wind this up maybe five or six times, put that over the end, and then you're gonna pull one end and then tighten the other, and then just loop it back on itself like that. Now to make sure that this line is perfectly perpendicular to the house, that is a right angle, we're gonna use the three, four, five method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our tape even with the edge of our string, and we're gonna come over three feet and mark that location. So that's three feet. Now on the string here, we're gonna measure over four feet. And then when we connect this line on the house to the line we made on the rope, it should be exactly five feet which looks pretty good right there. Now, obviously I already adjusted it so that it was perfectly square, but if you're off a little bit, what you're gonna do is just move this nail back and forth along this batter board until it's perfectly square. So it's a bit iterative going back and forth until you get it perfect, but you wanna make sure that you're perfectly square. Okay, now that we got this line in, which we're pretty confident is perfectly perpendicular to the house, we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. Since my deck is going to be 30 feet wide, I set another stake 30 feet from the edge of my house, and then I use the 3-4-5 method one more time to check that I was perfectly square. And you can use any right triangle, so instead of a 3-4-5, you could do a 6-8-10, and it's usually more accurate the larger you go on that right triangle, you just might need a second set of hands. And then as a final check, we know that the width of the deck is 30 feet at the house, so we can just confirm that we have 30 feet out here away from the house. Now that we have our two lines that are running perpendicular to the house established, now we can set our beam, but for that we have to start talking about building codes. 
If your deck is going to be permitted, you have to build it in accordance with local codes. In my area, that's International Residential Code, specifically Section R507, which is for exterior decks but check the local codes in your area. My county also put together this builder's guide, which is based on IRC section 507, which actually just kind of summarizes all the main points and your county might have one too. But before we get too deep into terminology and code requirements, here's a quick refresher on the components of a deck. You have the ledger board that attaches to the house, the joists that run perpendicular to the beam, and then your rim joist, which attaches to the end of the joist. And then obviously you have your footers and your posts. Now for my deck, I'm using two by eight lumber, which means the max joist span is 11 foot, 10 inches. And to get that number, I went to the joist span table. I'm using two by eight Southern pine lumber at 16 inch joist spacing, which gives me the 11 foot, 10 inch max span. And because my joist back span is around 10 to 12 feet, let's say I have a max cantilever of three feet. So for my deck, I'm gonna put my beam 11 foot, two inches from the house to stay under that max span of 11 foot, 10 inches. So I'm just gonna measure 11 foot two inches from the house. Okay, we have one end at the house. We have 11 foot two inches right here. Let's go ahead and set our stake. Okay, looking pretty good right at 11 foot two. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. By setting a stake on each side of the deck at 11 foot two inches, we'll be able to connect those two stakes with a string, which will give us a perfectly straight line for our beam 11 foot two inches from the house. And after running that string to the other side, instead of tying it to the stake, I'm gonna set myself up for a friction knot. I'm just gonna sink a screw, and that's just gonna make it really easy to take this string on and off. And like I said before, you're just gonna wind it, you know, six or eight times, put it around the screw, and then pull one end and tighten the other. And this is just a friction knot, which makes it super easy to tighten and then remove later on. I'm gonna be using two two by 10 pieces of lumber for my beams, so let's head back to the code charts. So with two two by 10s as my beam and a deck joint span that is just under 12 feet that means that my maximum beam span length is seven foot four inches after doing the math i found that i would need five posts spaced around six and a half feet apart and the maximum beam cantilever is allowed to be a quarter of the beam span length so an eight foot beam span would allow for a two foot beam cantilever now in terms of actually marking the post and footer locations based on my beam spacing i like to set a stake in the corner so i can pull the dimensions straight off that after marking the post and footer locations on the string i use a plumb bob and some spray paint to actually mark the footer location on the ground. And you're just gonna repeat this process for all of the footers that you need for your beam. One thing to note is that if you're gonna need two beams, the splice needs to land directly on top of a post and there's a detail in the building codes showing you exactly how that needs to look. And although most decks are just gonna have one beam, I am a masochist, so I'm installing three more beams so I have the opportunity to install a hot tub later on. This was a pain in the butt and it's gonna require a ton of footers, but it is what it is, man. Now, obviously I can't cover every scenario that you might run into for your deck, but the good news is that it's all covered in the codes. An example would be if you don't wanna have a ledger board, you can install a second beam closer to the house and that way you'll have a freestanding deck that has a slight gap between the deck and the house. Sometimes this is a good idea. Also, when planning the length and width of your deck and the overall size, think about what you're gonna use it for. Are you gonna have a dining table? Are you gonna have a grill? Are you gonna have a spa? Think about all that to the max extent possible before you build your deck. Lastly, when planning your deck, keep in mind the code requirements and standard material sizes. For example, most decking boards are a maximum of 16 feet wide. So if your deck is either gonna be you know, 15 feet or 17 feet, go with 15 feet because then you can just get one decking board to cover the entire deck. Another example would be if you want your deck to be a little bit longer, use a two by 12 because you can go 16 feet as opposed to a two by eight or a two by 10 because at that point you need to install a second beam if you want to be code compliant. At the end of the day, if you spend some time reviewing the codes and you sketch out your deck either on paper or in a 3D model, I have a ton of confidence that you will be fine. And if you want some more information on deck planning and the whole process for building a deck, you can check out my completely free ebook down below. And as promised, here's how you can use some line to win 20 bucks. First, you're gonna ask your friend if he can cut this line using his bare hands. He's gonna try, he's gonna fail. Then you're gonna bet him 20 bucks that you can rip it in under five seconds. And when he agrees, ask him to start the timer and then collect your 20 bucks. Here's how to do it. Step on the loose end and then take your hand, reach it around, grab, pull this down and wind it around. You're gonna have this right here and then you can use friction to snap it. In next week's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to plan, how to dig, and how to pour your concrete footers. Hope to see you there, and God bless. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss next week's episode.